Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Brawl Battle, and if you've made it this far into the series, then I have good news for you. This is the final episode in our series for Roblox beginner scripting. And I will talk more about this at the end of the video, but for all you need to know right now is that this concept we're going to be talking about is probably the most complicated concept in our entire series so far, but hopefully I'll be able to walk you through it and help you understand it by the end. Okay, so the last concept we're going to be talking about is tables, and this is a pretty important one to talk about. It is pretty hard to understand, so that's why I'll try to explain it uh, to the best of my ability. So what is a table? A table is a essentially a data structure that holds multiple items of specific data types all into one. So it's kind of like grouping items together inside of one table that are either related to each other or are not related to each other. But it's a group of data that you can uh, manipulate however you want to instead of using individual items on their own. There are two types of tables that I'm going to be dis discussing about in this video. One is an array and two is a dictionary. But first, let's talk about arrays. So an array is essentially a type of table that stores multiple values into a table, but is ordered in sequential order, and it's just a table full of values like I was describing a normal table. The way I can show you it is through, let's quickly create a script here on workspace, hit the plus sign, create a script, and then we will rename the script to tables. And we'll delete this. Here's here's the structure of an array. So first, we're going to create a variable for our array. We're going to call this uh, local my array. Okay. So now I want you to understand how we structure this array. Like I mentioned, an array is essentially just a table that's full of values, and that's all it is, separated by a comma. Uh, indicating each item that's inside of the array, distinguishing each item that's in the array. So how we're going to do that is we're going to uh, we're going to write new syntax that we've never written before, and we're going to be creating an array through the use of open and close curly brackets. And Roblox automatically puts in the close curly brackets for you, so it's kind of similar to open parentheses and close parentheses, but instead it's going to be curly brackets, open curly brackets and close curly brackets. So this is the syntax for creating an array and now what we're gonna do is inside of our curly brackets we're gonna be writing a whole bunch of values inside of here uh, and separate them by commas so when you're creating an array um, these values can be of any data type it can be an integer like the number 10 uh, it could be a string like uh, hello it could be a boolean value like true it could just be multiple values of different data types put inside of one array so essentially all three of these values are grouped inside of one table and we can uh, manipulate this table however we want to okay so the thing you have to know about with arrays is that any item that you put inside of this list is ordered sequentially so when when you're at the beginning of an array then this is going to be the first position inside of the array and each each item is basically numbered sequentially uh, based on the position that the item in the array is. So this is the first element in the array because it's on the very left side of the array. And then and then it just goes up sequentially. So this is element one, this is element two, and this is element three. And if we keep going by adding in more values, like let's say 100 this time, this is element four. And we're able to access uh, any value inside of the array using that position and I'm gonna show you how so down here we're going to hit enter and then we're gonna make a print statement and inside of this print statement we're going to get the value of whatever is contained in the position one for example we're going to say my array and then how we're going to access the position specifically is that we're going to say the name of the array put in the hard brackets uh, so this is what a hard bracket looks like. It kind of looks like a square uh, if you put in the hard bracket, the open hard bracket and the closed hard bracket. So basically how the hard brackets work is that if we put in an array here and then we put in a hard bracket here, this is going to tell us that we want to access a specific value using the provided position that we're going to put inside of here. And we want to take that value that's in there and print it. We're going to say my array and we want to get the position of one specifically, which is going to be 10. So we're going to say one inside of these uh, hard brackets. So now what's going to happen is that when we run the game, it's going to fetch the value that's in the first position, which is 10, and then it's going to return it and we're going to print that statement. So let's go back into the game, hit test, hit play. And then what should happen is that when we hit run, uh, it should print the number 10 because 
when we uh, loaded up the game, we we said that we wanted to print whatever value was in the first position, and the the one that's in the first position is ten. So now let's change it to three this time. So whatever's in the third position, we're going to return that and then print it. So this is the first position, this is the second position, and this is the third position. So in this case, we're going to return true, and then we're going to print that. So let's go back into the game and hit play. And then as you can see, it has printed true yet again. Uh, that's what we wanted to do. So that's a really cool thing about arrays is that. Arrays are designed for you to specifically access specific values inside of an array that you create. As long as you know the index of what you want to fetch inside of this array, then you're able to access it through their positional values. Okay, now what if we want to access all of these values inside of our array and not just one of them at a time? The way we're going to do this is that we're basically going to fetch everything that's inside of our array and loop it through using a for loop to access every single element that's inside of it. So let's uh, delete our print statement here and then we're gonna drop a line here. So the way a structure of an, of an array goes is that we're going to start with a four. We're gonna create a variable name, uh, which in this case, we're gonna say for element, we're gonna say equals and how we're going to access each element inside of this array. If you remember, um, going back to our positional values. So this is one, this is two, three, four. Uh, every single element inside of an array has a position. So the way we're going to access each element in the array is that we're going to go through a for loop and we're going to use our counter variable to access each element that's inside of the array. So we're going to have a starting value of one because that's going to be the first element inside of the array. We're going to do a comma space. How we're going to iterate through all the elements in the array is that we're going to have an end value that's equal to the number of elements that's inside of the array which makes sense because we're going to start at one here and our end value is going to be whatever is is back here at the very last element. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. So ideally we put four here, but it's not very optimal to put a specific number here because my array can just change at any time. And then if you added like a, another value here, then you would have to manually modify this. So that's why we're not gonna do that. What we're going to do instead is we're going to use a special operator uh, that Roblox has provided for us to be able to get the exact number of elements of, an, of a table. And how we're gonna do that is we're going to delete this and we're going to write a hashtag symbol here. The number key is basically saying we want to access the number of elements that's inside of uh, inside of our table, which in this case it's my array. So we're going to say my array. We're going to go from the first element, which is this one, all the way up to the number of elements that are inside of the array, which in this case it's four. So it's going to go all the way up here, which makes sense. I hope it makes sense to you. And then we're going to say do. And what we're going to do from here is that element is our counter variable. I think a better term for this would be for index. I think index would actually be a better term because the way we describe the position of an element inside of our array, we describe that as the index value. So that's why we're actually gonna rename element to index. So now what we're gonna do is, if you remember, how we were able to access each element inside of our array was that we did a print statement and then we did my array and then we put in uh, like an, an argument here, a number that displays our index for whatever values inside of here. We're going to essentially do the same thing here, but we're going to use our index value um, because our index value is going to change uh, for every single time we iterate through uh, the for loop. So how we're gonna do that here is that we're going to write our print statement again, but this time what we're gonna do is we're going to say my array, and then in our hard brackets, we're going to put index. We're not gonna put a specific number, but instead we're going to put in our index uh, counter variable because it's going to update after every single iteration, starting from one all the way until it reaches the end of the array. So now if we go into the game, hit test and hit play, then we should see every single value being printed inside of our output, which in this case, it worked. Now, you might be asking, why are we using a for loop instead of just printing out the whole array itself? I'm gonna show you why. So let's just quickly delete this and then um, use a print statement to print my array. So the reason this is not going to work is that my array is an object and it's not going to automatically just print out whatever uh, is contained inside of this table because a table is an object that has its own properties um, that I'm not really gonna go too deep into about because it's it gets kind of complicated because as you can see down here, it just displays a table with a hash value, which 
Again, you, you probably don't know what that means, and I'm not going to explain it to you here in this video. All you need to know is that you can't explicitly print my array. Another thing you might want to know about is making modifications to the array while the game is running. So, what I mean is like adding elements to an array and also removing elements to an array. You know how to do this through Roblox Studio. You basically just delete whatever you don't want and you just add whatever else you want to the array. But what could be, but what's useful is being able to modify the array while the game is running. Like while some specific action happens, like let's say uh, you open up a pet inside of Pet Simulator X and um, there's like some, some variables that change around. There's like some things that you need to change around with your script. You want to be able to change, you want to be able to modify the array while the game is running. And I'm gonna be showing you two methods of doing so, by adding and by removing. So let's just delete all this here. And we're going to create our uh, array again. We're gonna say local numbers array. That's what we're gonna call this one. We're just gonna call this numbers array. And then we're gonna set that equal to uh, an empty array. The way an empty array looks is that we're just gonna use the open curly brackets and close curly brackets. That indicates that this is gonna be an empty array. So we're gonna drop uh, a few lines here. And the way we're going to add values into our uh, array is that we're gonna have to use a built-in infrastructure that Roblox has provided for us called table, which is essentially um, like a blueprint that gives us multiple methods to work with when we're modifying tables. So the way it looks is that we're going to write in all lowercase table uh, dot, and then Roblox has provided us uh, a lot of methods inside of our table infrastructure to be able to modify tables with. So in this case, we're gonna use table dot insert. And so we're gonna put in open parentheses and close parentheses, and then the first, and then this, table.insert takes in two arguments. The first one is going to be the actual table, or in this case, array itself, which is going to be numbers array. We're gonna put that in, and then we're gonna put a comma, space. And then, we're, and then for our second argument is going to be the actual value we want to add into the array. And the way that uh, Roblox is going to add these values in is that it's going to add in the value that's on the very last element. Uh, so it's not going to be inserted onto the very first element, but it's going to be inserted onto the very last element. So what I mean is if I had a number 10, 20, uh, 30, then if I were to insert, let's say 40 here, then Roblox is going to automatically insert a number 40 as the, the last element inside of our array. So it's gonna be placed right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to write our for loop again to, uh, to test out our numbers to see if they actually work. So we're gonna say for, and in this case, I'm just gonna say I, that's like short for index, equals one comma numbers array, uh, oh, no, 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 sorry. Uh, I forgot to add in the hashtag symbol. Uh, for i equals one to the number uh, of elements that are inside of the numbers array, do print numbers array hard brackets i. So we're gonna iterate through every single element that's inside of here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight this, we're going to uh, copy it, and then down here, we're going to paste it so that we're going to see what happens to the numbers array before we add in the 40, and then we're gonna see if it actually adds in properly. So we're gonna hit play, and then what should happen is that uh, 10, 20, and 30 is printed, but now, uh, since we added in 40, it now prints 10, 20, 30, and 40 because it adds in to the value successfully. But now, uh, let's try removing it. So, the way we're going to remove that, uh, remove the value is that we're going to say table dot in, oh no, sorry, table dot remove, and, uh, how this method works is that we're, for our first argument, we're going to put in the numbers array again, ju just like our insert method, but now, we're going to hit comma, and here's something you have to be careful about. It says it removes the specific element from the array that takes in the index of the element and not the value itself. We're not trying to put in 40 or 30 or 20. What this method is looking for is the position specifically. And as you know, the position of 40 is specifically at position four. So that's why you have to be careful about this. We have to say four and not 40 because 40 is in the fourth position of the of the numbers array. Like let's say if I add in 40 here, then it's gonna start at one, two, three, four. So it's at position four that we're trying to remove, which in this case is 40. Let's copy our uh, testing print statements again and let's hit play. So what should happen is we should have uh, 10, 20, 30, 
10, 20, 30, 40, and then with our remove statement, it should remove 40 again, 10, 20, 30. So there you go. Um, that works just as planned, and you can uh, add multiple insert statements if you want here, but you do have to be careful about um, adding multiple remove statements is that if you try to remove something from an empty array, then Roblox is, is just gonna throw you an error, and that's something you just have to look out for and be careful about. Okay, and the last thing for arrays is looking for values inside of an array when you're iterating through it. So let's just delete uh, all of this here and let's update our numbers array. We're gonna add in 40, we're gonna add in 50, 60, 70, uh, 80, 90, 100. So it's, um, it's an array that goes from 10 to 100. And what we're gonna do is we're going to check while we're doing our for loop to check for a specific value. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to delete this print statement here and we're gonna write an if statement. We're gonna say if numbers array and remember how you access a, a value inside of an array uh, when we're iterating through the whole thing is that we're going to uh, put in the hard brackets and we're going to put in our uh, our index uh, control variable uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to say if this equals something specific like let's say in this case 50 then what we're going to do is we're going to say print um, there is a value with 50 in this array that's what we're going to say here because essentially what it's going to do is it's going to iterate from the first index to the very last index and it's going to check each one of them until it uh, until it reaches a number that's 50 and if a 50 exists inside of this array then it's going to print there is a value with 50 in this array so let's go back into the game and hit play and it should print there is a value with 50 in this array because inside of our array there is a 50 it eventually went through until it searched for the 50 but now let's say if there's a 55 in here obviously if we uh play the game then there is no value that exists with the 55 and it just iterated through the entire list uh just to not be able to find 55 and this was basically like a check to make sure uh, if this value was in uh, the array or not, it wasn't in the array, so it didn't do anything. So that's another important thing to know about uh, when you're uh, searching through specific values inside of an array. Okay, our next table type is going to be dictionaries. So let's just quickly uh, comment block all this here so that we have reference to our arrays later inside of this video if we ever need it. Okay, so essentially what a dictionary is is that it's another type of table but only if you want to access these variables based on a key value rather than uh just having a rather than having a table with just values in them instead you want to associate each value inside of this table with a key that's attached to it so let's say for example uh you have a real life english dictionary you're you're able to flip through each of uh, each of the different definitions inside of the dictionary in which each term is associated with the definition. So it's like, let's say we want to define uh, the term apple. It's a common fruit that we all eat, and that would be the definition. So in a dictionary, the key would be the term, and then the definition would be the value. So it basically works the same way here. We have a term, and then we have a definition for it. And that's the way we're able to organize our table and search through our table it's through key value pairs so now i'm going to show you uh an example of how it's laid out so let's create a uh, dictionary with a variable name so we're going to say local uh we will make a menu how about that we'll make a menu like a restaurant menu that has the term or the key value pair, which in this case, it's going to be the item, uh, it's gonna be the menu item name, and then we're gonna associate that with a price of how much it's going to cost uh, in dollars, let's say. The restaurant menu item name is going to be the key, and then its price is going to be its value. So we're going to say local menu equals, and then the syntax is going to be the same for an array. We're gonna have the open curly and close curly brackets. But this time, to make it more organized, we're going to hit enter so that uh, we have this organized line by line structure so that it's easier for, for us to be able to read our dictionary. Um, you don't have to do it like this, but for a dictionary, I do advise you to structure your dictionaries like this. And um, 
I'm going to show you what it's going to look like once we actually finish this dictionary. On the left side, what we're going to do is we're going to write our key value pair, which is going to be the name of our item, which in this case, let's call let's, let's call it a cheeseburger. That's what we're going to call it. A cheeseburger, that's going to be the key value pair. And now we're going to associate it with a price value. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say equals and we're going to put in a number here to represent the price. Let's say $20. Now, $20 is a very outrageous price for a cheeseburger, but I mean, it is what it is, I guess. So we have our key and we have our value that's associated with that key. So a cheeseburger is going to cost you $20. So now if we want to add in another uh, item to our menu, we're going to separate each item with a comma. So kind of like how it was up here uh, with 10, 20, 30, 40, we're going to separate each item with a comma. Okay, so uh, my bad, I kind of messed up here a little bit. So when you're having a key value pair, there's only two ways you can make a key value pair. It's either structuring it like this with hard brackets, like this is one way of doing it. But another way of doing it is just by writing a variable name itself, uh, like cheeseburger, like this. There's only two ways of writing key value pairs, and it's either through a variable name, or it's either through this specific um, format right here, where you have the hard brackets, and you have a string that's attached inside of this uh, hard brackets. I'm gonna show you why in a little bit of, of like when we actually get to accessing each of these values, but one important thing to know about is that when you're sticking to a key, uh, key value, uh, it should be consistent throughout the entire dictionary, and it shouldn't just be randomized like like having a variable here and then having uh, like this specific format right here. It should be consistent throughout. So let's put in more values in here. Let's add in a, another element. This time, let's put in the good old um, golden wedges, uh, also known as fries. I said friend by accident, but I meant fries. Okay, equals uh, $5 fries. We'll make it that. And then we'll add more stuff here with, uh, let's add in pancakes for this one. We'll make the pancakes, 10 bucks. We will make other things uh, like milk, good old milk. We will set that to a price of, let's say $4 this time. Okay, so now we have uh, a pretty sizable dictionary with uh, all these different menu items with their names associated with a value, which in this case would be the price. Now, if you're at the last value of a dictionary, you can leave a comma in there or just remove the comma. It doesn't really matter uh, what you put in for the last element. It doesn't really matter that much. So let's drop a few lines down here. And now that we have our dictionary, how are we going to access each item inside of the dictionary? So remember how up here with our array, the way you were able to access an item inside of the array was that you basically put in the array number and then inside of the hard brackets, you access it based on their position. But this time for a dictionary, how you access a value inside of a dictionary is by associating the key with, uh, with like whatever the key's name is uh, over here. So what I mean is, let's make a print statement here. And what we're going to say is, we're going to um, put in our menu dictionary, and then we're gonna put in the hard brackets again. But this time, instead of putting a positional value, like one or two or three, this time we're going to access the value based on the key. Uh, that it's associated with. So let's say cheeseburger, for example. The way the price of the cheeseburger is gonna be accessed is by um, having the hard brackets, and then in quotations, we're going to say cheeseburger, and Roblox is automatically gonna place that in for us. So now, when we print this uh, print statement here, menu uh, with the positional value of cheeseburger, it's going to print its value, which is going to be the price. So if we go back into the game, hit play, it's going to display the price, which is 20. So as you can see, that's how it uh, basically works right there. So we could just X out of that and then move forward. Now we can be more specific with other things here. We can write a comma with our print statement by uh, now putting in the price of, let's say the fries. And then we can put another comma here with the price of, let's say the milk. So now we have all these three different elements uh, that we will uh, try on C inside of our print statement. So it's going to print the price of the cheeseburger, the price of, I think, this one was, I forgot what this was, but the third one is milk, I know that. Uh, so if we like go back in, oh yeah, the fries, that's right. Yeah, so it's like, we're able to access the values based on the, the value given to us uh, here. So that's how you access values using key value pairs inside of a dictionary. Okay, but now I'm gonna show you how to modify a value inside of a dictionary. It's pretty easy to do. So let's just delete this print statement here. And the way we're going to modify a value is by 
basically just accessing the value itself and then just changing it. So what I mean is, uh, all we have to do is just say menu and then access uh, whatever uh, value we're trying to we're trying to change based on the key. So we'll say milk. Uh, let's say one day we want to change the price of milk uh, to something that's more expensive. We want to have more expensive milk uh, inside of our menu inside of instead of having it be four dollars. So we just say menu and then we have the hard brackets in quotations with milk and then we say equals uh, six or just any number and then it should change the value. Um, if we run this statement, so let's say let's write a print statement here and then we will access menu um, Milk the milk inside of the menu So now it should print six instead of four because we updated the value that was inside of there So as you can see the value has been updated to six inside of the dictionary Okay, but now what if I had a different dictionary uh, with different key values that are formatted differently? So let's just uh, comment out all this. Let's create our menu again uh, but this time we're going to make we're going to make the keys as a variable uh, instead of um, formatting it like this like a string so we're going to say cheeseburger equals 20 and then we're gonna say uh, fries equals 5 okay so now the way we're gonna access this is going to be a little bit different from this the way we're gonna access it here is through its direct variable um, instead of having like this format here we're going to just say print Let's say if we were to access the variable, it would be menu dot cheeseburger. It would simply just be a dot with whatever value you're trying to access based on the key. The key is just a variable name on its own. So that's how you access it using the other way of creating key value pairs. Okay, so let's delete this and let's uh, unhide uh, this comment block here. So we know how to use for loops and we know how to use while loop. We and we also know how to loop through an array using a for loop with numbers. There's a there's a more conventional way of looping through tables such as arrays and dictionaries. That's through the use of pairs and i pairs. So what do I mean by that? So let's say we have our menu with our item name and our price. If we want to be able to access each key and each value uh, for every single iteration of this dictionary, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to use a pairs for loop because from this from this loop, we're able to access a value based on its associated key, but we're not able to access the key itself using like a normal for loop. So what we have to do is we have to use something called a pairs for loop. So the way we're gonna structure it is like this. So let's just delete this part right here and we're going to write a four, but this time, instead of writing a counter variable, here uh, like I equals to one and then this and this and this like like we're not gonna do that anymore what we're going to do now is we're going to actually create two variables one for the key that's being currently iterated and the the value that's also currently being iterated alongside that key so what I mean is we're going to create two counter variables instead of one this time so what we're gonna say is we're going to give a name to the key itself which is going to be menu item and then we're going to put a comma here and then we're going to make a, ver a counter variable for its associated price so we'll just say price and then what we're going to do is we're gonna hit space we're gonna say in and then we're gonna say pairs so now what we're going to do here is we're going to put in open parenthesis and close parenthesis and inside of these uh parentheses we're going to put in the dictionary that we're trying to iterate through so we're going to put in menu inside of here and then we're just going to say do and then we're going to drop a line Okay, so to understand what's happening here, instead of creating a one counter variable to just represent a number of the index, this time what we're going to do is we're going to create two counter variables. One is going to be the menu item and it's going to be the price that's associated with that menu item. And it's going to iterate through each and every pair that's inside of the menu, hence in pairs. So now what we can do is we can write a print statement here and we can print out the menu item and we can also put a comma to print out the price too. So now if we go inside the actual game, we're able to see the menu item name plus its price. As you can see down here, we have uh, the menu item name and we also have a price associated with that separated by space. So that's a really interesting way of being able to access both the key and the value inside of a dictionary. So that is something really, really useful for you to know about and to understand. So pairs are very useful if you're trying to iterate through a key value dictionary. 
um, or anything that has a key and a value. But what if we want to access all the items in an array that's more conventional than what we did up here? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna comment out our dictionary here um, just, just to keep it there for reference in case we go back to it. We're going to um, keep our numbers array visible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, like the beginning of the comment block and we're actually going to place it inside of here inside of the for loop instead so that we only have the numbers array visible we're going to try and access every single value that's in the array on top of their number so how we're going to do this is we're we're going to say for so what we're going to say here is we're going to create two variables again one is going to be the position of where each element is going to be and the value that that position is associated with so for example position one has is the key and 10 is the value associated with that key. We're going to say for, let's say index, and then comma, we'll say uh, number, because uh, each index in the array is associated with a number, in, and then what we're gonna, we're gonna do is, we're not gonna say pairs, but this time we're gonna say i pairs, because that's short for um, iterator pairs. Uh, and so we're going to put in the open parentheses, we're going to put numbers array, and we're going to say do. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to hit print, and what we're going to do is we're going to print the index, and then we're going to put a comma to separate it, and the number associated with it. So what's going to happen is that each index is has a, a value associated with it. Index 1 has the value of 10. Index 2 has the value of 20. So if we go into the game, we'll be able to see this inside of our output, and things should go accordingly. So as you can see, with an iterators pair, we start with 1, and it's and it has a value associated with each iteration of the counter. So that is something very useful for uh, it, for i pairs and normal pairs. The thing you'll be using mostly as a Roblox developer is pairs. I know that it's something that developers use a lot. Even for me, I have used pairs a lot when I'm iterating through uh, multiple pieces of information at once. So that's pretty much the basics of tables. How you can utilize multiple pieces of data inside of one so that you can be able to manipulate them as you want inside of the games that you're creating. This was a lot to take in, but tables are a very important concept to know about, and it's going to be very helpful. So I'm glad you were able to stick around and watch this tutorial on tables, because this is the longest episode inside of our beginner scripting series uh, by far. And luckily, it's also the last one in our beginner scripting tutorial series. So we're, we're actually done with our beginner scripting tutorial series. All I gotta say is congratulations for going through my beginner scripting tutorial series. I mean, whether you have been sticking around ever since the first episode, or if you're new here and you just came from one of my more recent videos, I'm glad you chose my scripting tutorial videos out of any other scripting tutorial videos that are on the website, because I know what I'm doing is definitely not original. Uh, there's definitely many other YouTubers who I've been influenced by uh, to make this kind of scripting tutorial series. Like, I used to watch Alvin Blocks. He was a very big influence to me. Uh, the Dev King is definitely a very big influence to me as well. If it wasn't, those are the, the big two Roblox scripting YouTubers that I look up to. And of course, there are other scripting YouTubers on Roblox that do make tutorial videos like I am doing right now. But I just thought this was something fun for me to do. Because programming is something I'm very passionate about, and especially Roblox scripting, because I've been scripting on Roblox for a very long time. Although I don't really program on Roblox as much as I used to, I thought why not share my knowledge to everybody who wants to become the next big developer one day on Roblox. I just hope that whatever knowledge you've taken from from these scripting videos. I hope you put it to great use, and I'm glad that I've been able to share my my knowledge with you. But other than that, let me know what you think of my scripting series. Do you think that some of my episodes were too long? Do you, do you think they were too short? Do you think they were unnecessary? Do you like it when I break down all my videos into certain topics that are each like five to 20 minutes long with a daily upload? Or do you prefer longer videos with less uploads and kind of like, combining multiple concepts together into one video rather than separating them into like 10 different videos. Let me know what you prefer because uh, when this video drops, I'm going to create some community posts and I want you to answer the polls to let me know what you think you like the most, whether you like shorter videos that are daily uploads or you prefer longer videos that are, that are less uploads. I wanna know what you think. For the future of this channel, I might be making more developer-related content, more on like the advanced series, where I talk about more complicated stuff, 
and I really want to know if my videos are helping you in any way, if you actually do think these videos are helpful to you, because if they're not, then, then I need to know what I can do to make them more helpful, because I want to be able to help as many people as I can in, in pursuing this, this skill with programming. I want to be able to help everybody understand what it takes to go from a beginner scripter to a really advanced scripter who can start making like the next big adopt me or the next big uh or the next big blocks fruit but with that being said all i'm gonna say is thank you for watching my roblox beginner scripting tutorial series wherever my channel may go in the future that's up to me to decide and i'm gonna need all the help i can get to get somewhere so I ask you that there's a few things you can do to support me. First is joining my community Discord server, which I've linked at the end of uh, every single episode of my beginner scripting tutorial series. It's also in the comments if you if you want to join that. Uh, but also just anything you can do to reach this out to uh, to more people. Like if there's somebody who's interested in doing Roblox scripting, then you can you can share this playlist to them uh, so that they can get get a start at learning how to script on Roblox. And also just anything else you could do, like watch my full scripting tutorial, like them, comment on them, subscribe, you know, things like that. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Any help that I can get, I'd be very appreciative for. Uh, I also do read all of my comments that, that do come to this channel, and so far the positivity has been non-stop, and I, I can't thank you guys enough for that. Because if it wasn't for the comments, if it wasn't for the likes, if it wasn't for the, the positive feedback that I've been getting from my tutorials, I probably would have stopped like halfway through. So I'm really thankful that that you guys enjoy that some of you guys enjoyed my scripting tutorials and that continue to support me the whole way through. So if you loved the series, you know, do everything you can to support me like I mentioned earlier. But other than that, this has been Brawl Battle talking about the beginner's guide to Roblox scripting and I will see you in the next video. Take care.